What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUp Essentials for iPad. So in today's video, we're gonna learn how the 3D workspace works, where everything's located, and then we're gonna do our first drawing inside of SketchUp for iPad. So this is a great place to get started if you haven't modeled inside of SketchUp for iPad before. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in this video, we're gonna start off and learn the fundamentals of modeling with SketchUp for iPad. So the first thing we wanna do is we're on the home screen, and if you need information on how to uh, navigate the home screen, that's the first video in this playlist. But what you wanna do is you wanna start by just creating a new project. So I'm just gonna click on Create New. That's gonna open up a new SketchUp file right here. That SketchUp file is going to be something that we're going to work in. Um, and so first off, let's talk a little bit about how we can navigate around inside of SketchUp for iPad. So first off, um, a, a lot of this is going to work like a lot of different iPad apps. So for example, if you want to zoom in, you're going to pinch to zoom using your fingers like this. Um, and one thing to note about this is we're going to focus on doing this with an Apple Pencil. Um, we're not going to worry about using a keyboard and a Bluetooth mouse, though if you do want a more typical SketchUp experience, that works too. Okay, so to navigate, you can zoom in and out by pinching to zoom. So I think this is a pretty typical iPad thing um, where pinching in and out is going to zoom in and out on your model. In addition, if you want to orbit around your model, you use a single finger, press it down on the screen, and then move it around. That's going to orbit on your screen like this. So in addition to that, you can also put two fingers down on the screen and then drag in order to pan. So pinch to zoom, to zoom in and out, um, single finger moving around on the screen in order to orbit, and then two fingers down on the screen um, moving around in order to pan. All right, so now let's take a quick look at the workspace, right? So at the very top of the page, you've got your menu bar. Um, it's got things like the ability to go home, the ability to undo and redo, share, get into your settings right here if you want to do that. And so you can also save your model by clicking on the button right here for save. And so on the left-hand side of the page, you've got your collection of toolbars or tools that you can use to draw inside of SketchUp for iPad. And so, like for example, if I want to activate the line tool, I could do that by tapping on the tools over here, right? So if I want to draw a rectangle like this, I can activate those tools just by clicking on each one of these or tapping on each one of these. Now I do want to note that a lot of these, and I'm going to close this back up for a little bit, um, note that a lot of these have modifiers in here. They're going to modify the, the way that they work. So like for example, the push-pull tool, if I was to select this face and then extrude this face up like this, and then I was to do it again, at the moment we're in typical push-pull mode, right? But these modifiers are going to change the way that this looks. So notice how if I click on this right here, it's gonna put us in copy mode or what they call in the desktop create new face mode like this. For the line tool, you've got modifiers that'll do things like locking your line to your axes, for example. So if I was to come over here, set a point, notice how now if I move my mouse, because I have this modifier clicked on right here, notice how this is locking this to the blue axis. Now, if I wanted to, I could tap this again with that tool active and um, it's going to lock things to the green axis. So just be aware that most of these are modifiers that are going to change the way that these tools act or the things that they do when you tap on them inside of SketchUp for iPad. The other thing about this is you can also click and drag these in order to move them around like this. So you can customize this bar right here. You can also bring other tools in depending on how much space you have, right? So like for example, let's say that I wanted to bring in the, let's go with the arc tool. What I could do is I can click and drag that over here, but it's not gonna allow me to do that because I don't have any space, right? So what I could do though, so let's say I didn't want the scale tool over here. I could click and drag this in here, then, I can click and drag the arc, or let's say we wanted the two-point arc into the toolbar right here. So you can customize the tools that are shown in here, just like this. And note that there are more tools that you can access by clicking on the three dots or tapping on the three dots at the bottom of the page, like this. So um, now you can see all those different tools, which you can activate by tapping on them. On the right-hand side of the page, we've got a bar that's very much like the one on SketchUp Free. And so it's got access to things like your entity info, which is gonna give you information about the objects that you have selected, right? So if I do this, right, notice how it's giving me information about the entities I have selected. If I select these two edges, I get the lengths of the two edges. 
because all I've selected is things of this type. So just be aware that there are tools over here on the right hand side of the page as well. So things like your material selector that you're going to use with the paint bucket tool. So when I activate that paint bucket tool, right, to apply materials, I can select the materials that I'm going to apply using the windows on the right hand side of the page. So there's a bunch of different things in here, like the outliner, which allows you to organize your model, um, scenes, which allow you to save views and create animations, um, a bunch of stuff over here, which we can get into in a future video. Just be aware that this is here for what we're doing right now. All right, and then the other thing is, notice how if I was to select things like this, using the lasso select tool, it's gonna to pop up a little bar at the bottom of the page. That bar is gonna allow you to do things with your current selection. So for example, I've got cut, I've got paste, I've got make group and make component. I've also got the trash can button right here. So if I wanna delete things, I can just click on that in order to do that. And notice how there are a bunch more options if you have things selected and you click right here. So these are the things that on your computer, if you were to right click, um, these are the menu options that would show up with a right click in your computer. So now let's talk a little bit about modeling in SketchUp for iPad. All right, so first off, there's something you should understand about modeling with the Apple Pencil. And that is that if you go into your settings, there are actually two modes in here, right? So there's modes in here for just draw and click, move, click. And so what just draw is going to do if we select that is that is going to, as soon as you activate a tool, it's going to draw something. So if I press my pencil down on the screen and drag it across this page like this, it's going to draw until I let up with my pencil like this. Now this is a fine way to draw things. It's actually a faster way to draw things. However, for me, it's not ultra precise, right? And what, what I mean when I say that is if I was to activate the line tool, for example, and I wanted to draw based on the center point of this line, as soon as I put my pencil down, it's going to draw from wherever my pencil touches the line, right? Well, that's a problem if I'm trying to pick up that midpoint, because if I miss it, it's just going to draw a line from nowhere. So it doesn't really give me the ability to use any inferencing. It just gives me the ability to kind of guess where things are with the first point that I put down. However, the other mode for drawing, click, move, click, gives you a little bit more control. And note that this is only going to work with the Apple Pencil. Um, it might work with other pencils that do pressure sensitivity. I'm not sure. Um, but what it's not going to do is it's not going to work with the inexpensive styluses like this one that don't have any pressure sensitivity, right? There's no pressure sensitivity to this one that I was using previously. So click, move, click isn't going to work. This is only going to work with the Apple Pencil, and it might work with some of the other styluses that have pressure sensitivity, that I'm not sure. But now, what I want to do, um, once I've switched this over to click, move, click, is let's start fresh over here. So I'm going to get rid of this, delete it, and let's say that we were to draw a rectangle. Notice how now if I put my pencil down, it's not actually drawing anything right? It's kind of giving me a little indicator on the screen of where my pencil is touching the screen, but it's not actually drawing. And so it'll continue like this until I press down with my pencil. So did you notice when I did that, it gave me a little flash right here, and then it started drawing my rectangle. So what that's doing is it's waiting for a pressure input from you um, in order to finalize your location. This is a lot like uh, single clicking versus clicking and dragging um, inside of the pro version of SketchUp. But let's say I wanted to set this right here, right? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna press this down. We'll notice how it finalizes my object as soon as I do that. Now, if I was to select this surface, notice how it's gonna wait until I press down in order to draw this. And so what this does is it gives me a lot more control over things because I can pick my pencil up and then put it back down inside a SketchUp like this. Then I can press down in order to finalize things. This solves that problem of finding those midpoints, right? Because now I can, click and drag or tap and drag my pencil on the screen until I find a certain point, and then I can press down in order to draw. So it gives me a lot more control. I generally recommend the click, move, click um, for most things inside of SketchUp for iPad, but you can try them both and let me know what you think. And so for drawing inside of SketchUp for iPad, it's pretty easy. So we're gonna activate the line tool, for example. And what I wanna do is I wanna draw a line that's 10 feet long in this direction. So what I can do is I can put my uh, pencil down and press in order to start this. Then I'm gonna move my pencil in this direction. And so notice how what I can do in here is I can move my pencil to whatever point I want and then press down again and it's going to draw. But that didn't really give me what I want. 
what I want to do instead is I'm going to undo that. I'm going to set my first point, move my pencil in this direction. Well, notice how when I pick my pencil up, it's still got this box in here. Well, I can tap in this box and I can type in a value and hit the enter key. And so if I measure this, notice how it gives me a length of 10 feet. And so let's say that I wanted to lock this to an axis. Well, what I could do before I even start drawing is I can tap on the lock Y button right here and then find my first point and press down. Well, now, no matter where I move my pencil, we're going to be locked in this direction. So you can use that axis locking over here on the left-hand side of the page for your different tools. So we can use this in order to draw our lines and we can do something similar for things like boxes like this one. So let's say I wanted to draw a box over here and I wanna make sure that it's flat. So I'm gonna tap the lock Z button. Now, no matter where I place this, it's gonna be locked in that Z direction right here. So now if I place a point, move my pencil, and then place another point, it's going to make a box like this. Notice how I can tap in here and I can type in values again. So if I type in six foot, comma, six foot, that'll make this a six foot by six foot box right here. So you can be precise using this little bar right here inside of SketchUp. And so let's say that we wanted to go to 3D. What we can do is we can activate the push-pull tool and we're just going to click and find this point or click and find this face, press our pencil down, and then move our pencil up and press again in order to finalize this. So most of the tools that you use in the desktop version of SketchUp are all in here. So for example, if I was to click on, if I was to tap on the scale tool, notice how the scale tool gives me options for things like scale about center. So if I was to select this, this is gonna allow me to scale this face. And so let's say I wanted to create some recesses on the side of this. I could just tap on the surface. And then I'm just gonna set my distance to six inches. And then I could just push pull this in using the push pull tool. All right, so modeling things then is very similar to the way that they are on the desktop version of SketchUp. So let's say I want to create a very simple floor plan. I would just activate the rectangle tool. All right, so in the next video, we'll model something a little bit more complex. In the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.